Let's head north, in fact, to the most northern point on the globe. Now, an expedition led by a Russian teenage select were vying to ski across the Arctic, finishing at the North Pole. Now, we sent Roman Kostrov there to see if they achieved that aim. This is the fifth time that the father and son team of Dmitry and Matvey Sparo have organized this ski to the North Pole expedition. The format's been constant. Seven teenagers handpicked from thousands of eager would-be polar explorers across Russia begin their journey at the Barneo Drifting Ice Base and after about a week battling through some of the harshest conditions on Earth, the chosen few reach the global summit. This time it took the expedition seven days to cover the 110 kilometer distance from the last circle of latitude all the way up to the North Pole. But the young Arctic travelers had to stick around another full day at their final destination because the mission to pick them up, that's us, came late due to severe weather conditions which stopped us from flying. So what did you do while waiting for us? We played mafia, sang songs, told jokes, ate and slept and then slept and ate again. Did you bring us any food? <laughs> what? You've got a bucket with pies. To the helicopter! Well, the pies disappeared within seconds and the group was finally ready to pose for the camera and answer some questions. The weather's been very good. His face was literally battered by the hail like snow from the ground. When you ski, the wind stirs up the snow and fully covers your face and then cuts it. The goggles can't help at all. It was really hard. The circle dance around the North Pole can turn anyone into a carefree child. And that's been a tradition here over the past half a decade. But the custom of playing football at the World Summit dates all the way back to the Cold War, when the crew of a Soviet submarine broke through the polar ice to play the world's most popular game. Each year, Dmitry and Matvey Sparo dedicate the expedition to either a cause or a commemorative date. Their previous sub-zero treks have already been devoted to, among others, Russian teachers and the Sochi Winter Olympics. This time, the journey was made in the name of Ivan Papanin, who spent over 200 days here researching back in 1937. This is the copy of a flag which was raised at the North Pole by the expedition of Ivan Papanin 75 years ago. And we're commemorating their heroics with our trip. Their Arctic experience ends here, but the smiles of happiness are mixed with feelings of sorrow. Some have become inseparable friends and all of them learned the value of teamwork. Hunger for travel, the unknown and effort bordering the unattainable is what separates uh, those teenagers from the rest of their peers. At the age of 16 to 18, they have already conquered the North Pole and uh, their future life challenges now seem a little easier to handle. Roman Kostrev, RT, reporting from the North Pole.